How's it going guys? It's Ryan Small from Defy. I know it's been a while, but I'm back. Um, had to take care of a few things, but we're going to have a long list of player analysis going forward here uh, throughout the summer. So uh, let's get back uh, to the action. Um, we are Today we are going to be doing a Tohoka Nanticoke. Obviously everyone's been requesting. Uh, I do a little player analysis on this guy. And so here we are. Um, the only real good footage I got was from the Syracuse game and uh, some fall ball. So there's some shots and uh, dodges that we're going to focus on here. And uh, let's get let's get let's get moving forward with this. Uh, so let's look at some numbers here. Uh, we've got both Connor Fields and Tahoka actually in the stat sheet, and um, so he is shooting currently 31 roundup, 32 percent, which is pretty damn good. Uh, especially for a freshman, um, scoring a lot of goals. He's got 31 goals. Uh, but just to backtrack a little bit, if you look at Connor Fields, with, with ha as much as this team shoots and as fast as a pace that this team plays, both these percentages, I mean, Connor Fields being at 40 is just ridiculous. Um, and Tahoka being at 32-ish is actually really, really good as well because uh, these guys play a much faster pace and, um, and uh, therefore there's a lot more room for error. Uh, in percentages, I think tend to go down with a faster pace play, but regardless, um, very, very good stats. Uh, he's got 22 assists. So this guy is clearly well-rounded 31 goals, 22 assists. Um, he's having a great year. Uh, he's, he's just incredible freshman. So, uh, <clears throat> gotta give him credit for that. Um, all right. Uh, I don't have his uh, height and weight, but I don't think you really need that. First of all, it doesn't really matter your height and weight. Sure, there are certain advantages to some, to some degree, but at the end of this, at the end of the day, uh, his height and weight isn't what makes him a good player. It's how he utilizes it. So let's go forward here. All right, coming through. Everyone knows this shot, the between the leg shot. All right. So as we watch this, I want I want you guys to really pay attention to a few key things. Let me scroll back here. This guy, pretty much, he moves like a fast person. Now we know he's not fast. He's shifty, but he's not fast. He moves like a fast guy, though. And what I mean by that is his body is in the correct position, like I talk about all the time, right? We want to be at 90 degree angles for the most part, back straight, head up. These are very basic components of being an efficient mover. Okay, um, look how look at how his eyes are scanning the field. Head is up. Everything's perfect here. Now, when we talk about stick protection, I don't want to call it old school uh, because people still teach uh, to, to protect your stick in tight. Uh, but maybe that might be the right terminology to use. His way of protecting his stick is much different than I guess a typical field player. And if you look at it. He never has a stick in tight. His stick is always out and ready to do whatever it is he wants. Now, the reason why he's able to do that is because he keeps his body in between the stick and his defenseman. Even if they, that guy, as you can see right here, is going for a back check. I know he's falling down, but that's something you've got to realize. Now, a lot of players in this situation will take their stick and drag it back here instead of leaving it out in front like he is right now. Whether that's, <coughs> excuse me, whether that's because they have a lot of whip in their stick, um, there's various reasons. I think it tends to be habit with a lot of people, but uh, growing up playing box, you know to keep your stick out, away from your body, not in tight, uh, but more importantly, forward, meaning not dragging it behind you. So this is a difference between sagging, right? This is not sagging. If the stick were out here, it is sagging. Sagging has nothing to do with your arms being out, okay? And as you can see, he's about 90 there. Uh, a little higher, but the way he was able to get in this position was by dropping his butt and leaning his shoulder in, all right? Stick stays out. That allows for no back check, and that actually allows him to bring his stick back across quicker as, as this guy right here approaches, okay? When his stick at the beginning of this move if his stick is way back here, okay, when when that slide starts to come, it's going to be a lot harder. Like we're slowing this down, but this happens in, you know, milliseconds and seconds, right? When that stick 
If that stick's sagging back, it takes a lot longer to bring it across his body to protect it again from that slide. All right, so keep that in mind. Like there's a lot of reasons aside from just protecting your stick that you want it out in front. It allows you to shift quicker, it allows for less movement, and it allows you to um, respond a lot quicker, okay? The minimal effective dose, short distance between two points is a straight line. Apply it to everything, all right? Back is still straight, head is up, and as he comes through, now he's throwing it under his legs, which you know, actually might be pretty necessary right there because he had to bring a stick across. Um, if he brought it back to his right hand, it may have been checked. We don't know. And he's prim predominantly a right-handed player. So good thing to note as we're going forward here. Super efficient way to play. <clears throat> All right. So as we play this, here he is in the carrier dome leaning in, working on angles. This guy is really, really good at angles. All right. You, you, you watch him. After, this is after he caught the pass. Okay. A lot of guys, as they're coming in here, especially with this defenseman hooking them, a lot of guys would fade this way. Okay, that's what a lot of people would do. They would feel the pressure from this guy, and they would and they would fade away. When you have a step on your defenseman, just drop that shoulder and keep leaning in. There's no way their their stick should be strong enough just to hold you back. Okay, so as he catches that pass, I know we don't see the pass here. But as he's moving forward, he doesn't fade away from the goal. He steps and increases his angle like anyone else. Now, because of his skills, he's able to treat this like a left-handed shot, as we can see here. He comes in, and instead of keeping his stick on this side of his body, he brings it across. Now, how is he able to do that? He's able to do that because his arms aren't tight. He's not protecting his stick, like I said before, in tight here. He doesn't have it tucked in. He's able to do that because his hands are away from his body, even when he's in tight to the goal. All right? This is something you guys should always keep in mind. Body between your stick and your defenseman. In the same way defensemen say, ball you, man, when they're playing off-ball defense, I want you to think of the exact same thing when you're playing offense. Ball, meaning the ball on your stick, you, your body, and man, meaning the defenseman that's covering you. If you can maintain that principle you'll be able to do this going forward, all right? So he comes across, and because of his hands are, his way, are away from his body, he's able to bring his hands across his body for a quick, you know, just a little quick wrister right there. Very, very simple, okay, but very, very effective, and allows him to have his hands move independent of his body. All right, going forward here. Here's a pretty basic shot, right? Again, hands away from his body. You see it everywhere with this guy. You know, probably the best, he probably understands angles better than anyone in the college game right now. <coughs> he feels the pressure. The defenseman has the upper hand in this position, really. He, the only difference is he's not lower. He's not, he's not sitting in a chair. Right here, this is what, how fast people move. They sit in a chair, or should I say quick people. All right, they sit in a chair, okay? They understand leverage. They understand angles. Maybe not intellectually, but intuitively, all right? They come through. He can see that his defenseman is not going to be able to get that check on him. Just shifts his hands over. Little backhanded shot. Now, whether that was actually a push or not, I have no idea. That's debatable. But regardless, that's some, that's, that's some major skill set right there. Now, I love this shot. Because it shows you do not have to have a hard shot from the outside to be effective. Let's see if I got another angle on that. Okay, so back up a little bit. It all comes down to having your hands independent of your body. That's all it comes down to at the end of the day. Drops his shoulder, comes in, arms are at about 90 degrees. Maybe a little less, okay, but they're not in tight. Drops his shoulder, comes through, and all that is, as you guys can see, all that is is turning his hands over. Now keep in mind, throughout this entire motion, he's pressing towards the goal. He's trying to step towards the goal. Now he can't because the defenseman is pushing him away, obviously, but regardless, the, the, the sheer effort of trying to step towards the goal 
really helps you even if you can't do it because it gets momentum going forward. It allows your hands to drive forward, all right, and it, and it increases your angles, all right? That's what you want to be thinking about when you're driving towards the goal, especially if you body up a lot like this guy, okay? Because his hands aren't in tight, I'm going to repeat myself, he's able to get the, make that stick turnover very effectively without having to use his body to shoot the ball. You never want your body to guide the ball. You want your body to create the shot, if we're talking about an outside shot in particular, and you want your hands to guide it. And this is, a, this is proof right here. That's not a hard shot at all. That's just, that's just turning over your hands, a quick snap. All right? Watch again from a different angle. Coming forward, simple hand snap. I mean, look at that. The goalie has no idea where the ball is going because his body is not telling the goalie anything. His hands do everything, all right? Here he's coming up. Boom. Beautiful. Now, playing two-handed is overrated as an offensive player, in my opinion. But put that point aside, and what I mentioned earlier is this guy moves like a fast guy. Watch his head. Same principles can be applied to everybody. He's not fast. We all know that. But he moves like a fast guy, which means it doesn't matter necessarily how fast you are. It matters how you move. Watch his head going forward here. What turns first? Head. This is how Barry Sanders would, would do a roll dodge if, you, if you're a roll across player. All right? If you watch him... Uh, if you watch some old highlight reels of Barry Sanders, this is how he turns. Head turns first. It does two things. He can see if a slide's coming. And, as we know, body follows the head. Simple as that. And it allows him to assess the situation and decide if he's going to continue. And he can see a slide coming before the slide is even fully committed. And that allows him to get a stick in. All right? Turn your head when you're turning, when, when you're doing a roll dodge or you're turning in any way. Head turns first. Body follows the eyes. Body follows the head. All right? Hands independent of your body. Stay in tight. Not with your hands, but with your body. Keep your body in tight and pressing towards the goal. This is what we want as an offensive player. Really well done by this guy. So, a couple principles to take away. Hands operate independent of the body. That is universal among all great players. All right, this guy uniquely moves like a fast human, right? He moves like he's fast even though he's not fast. He drops his butt. He's at proper angles. His head turns before his body turns, all right? And obviously, like most great box players, he understands angles very, very well. He understands where to be uh, when he's shooting, and he's really good at getting the right shot, much like a batter in baseball. Great batters aren't always just great swingers, but they understand that they need the right weight for the right pitch. All right, so if you can apply these three principles going forward, um, who knows, you could be as good as this guy someday, if you're as obsessed as he is. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to have a lot more player analysis going forward. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.